Shalom, 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 Shabbat, shalom, mashbacha. I am Yashara Yahu, and just want to welcome everybody back again um, for another discerning of the word of Yahuwah, another scripture study. Um, I pray that the work week was indeed um, good to everyone. I pray that your children are safe, everyone is safe and in good health. Amen. Uh, we are continuing our look at the commandments. Um, the original 10 plus two additional ones, uh, the two greatest commandments, uh, so I say 12 commandments. And we have we have made our way to commandment number eight. And the, uh, um, the eighth commandment, <clears throat> excuse me, the eighth commandment is found in Shamuth Exodus chapter 20 verse 15. And it simply says, you shall not steal. So, um, before we can go any further, we should gather in our minds and in our hearts and our beings and our ruachs that what Yahuwah has for us is for us. And there is no need for us to, to steal, to take something that isn't for us. Again, when we look at uh, stealing, much like we was discussing and discerning murder and uh, adultery, it is starts within our minds and, and within our hearts to want to steal because we may think that we lack something or we may have some type of emotional uh, reaction and or attachment to the thing that somebody else has. Much like we can be emotionally compromised with the spirit of jealousy or envy about what another person has and not think that Yahuwah is going to do even more better for us so that's where um, some thoughts and actions to steal come from they come out of a negative place because we tend to covet what we see I mean I know I've come along a long way actually from looking at the things that other people have and wanting them for myself as opposed to Yahuwah correcting me and and showing me how to be content Amen. So we read um, Shabbat Exodus 2015. Let us look at uh, Uyakra Leviticus chapter 19 verse 11. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Amen. So in dealing falsely with each other, um, we can take this a step higher, a level up if we may, because personally, we deal falsely with each other. Um, we say something is of a, a higher value than what it actually is. Or we can go to the professional setting, whereas we go to a grocery store and they have manipulated the, uh, the weights and measurements of produce we go to buy. And I've seen this come out about Walmart, whereas they manipulate the scale to the point where the produce that we buy, or what they say it, it is, as far as how much you weigh, is false. And this, that is what Uyakra Leviticus 19.11 is talking about. Do not deal falsely with each other. We can go to Mashaya Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 11. A just weight and balance are of Yahuwah. All the weights of the bag are his work. So Yahuwah is all for a just weight, a man. As we see in nature, there is a just balance when it comes to life. We see, we see his, his, his work, his imprint on nature. Nothing is out of balance except for when it comes to man. We have been influenced. We have been coerced into doing things, of course, that are not of Yahuwah. We steal from each other, we lie to each other, we, we afflict each other, and most of the time, it is coming out of jealousy, envy, hate, um, a lust for power, um, coveting that which is not for us, a man. We have these tendencies, but 
This is the reason Yahuwah gave us his Dura. So that we can combat these tendencies with the things that are of him. With the things that are good and acceptable unto him. So we looked at uh, Shamuth Exodus 2015. You shall not steal. Um, Uyukra Leviticus 1911. You shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And at the base of it all, as it pertains to um, theft, especially when it comes to money or even when it comes to food, we're going to look at two different aspects. First, at the root of theft, you got 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So it is when we abandon the principle, the Thura, the covenant of Yahuwah, that we get pierced with many sorrows. And of course, whereas Paul is talking about in this scripture, it is backed up by the covenant that Yahuwah said. All throughout, of course, specifically the bar in Deuteronomy 28, uh, 15 through 68. This obedience brings destruction. So we have developed a love for this fiat currency. And we just got to have it. And by any means necessary, we are going to get it. Amen. But we can see here in Mashalia Proverbs. Uh, chapter 10 verse 2 again uh, do believe it that it is King Shalama Solomon who wrote Proverbs so this is what he says about um, the overindulgence of money or just basically seeking out the money only treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness delivers from death a man righteousness is what delivers from death now I want to go to yet another scripture as it pertains to money and and the lust after it. And what we find again coming out of Proverbs, Mashal your Proverbs chapter 13, 11. This is what it reads. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathers by labor shall increase. So it's only a matter of time before Yahuwah corrects it. So you can set up your fraud you can set up some kind of scheme you can be deceitful in your practice and how you sell a product how these stores operate how they have hidden prices here and there but the bottom line is is that if you gain your wealth by way of deceit by way of vanity then it won't last long matter of fact when i was in a when i was in middle school didn't know better. I was a little bit envious of one of my classmates who had a pair of Jordans. Um, at the time, I, my parents, my mother couldn't afford that. But I, I just wanted it. And I sat there and told my other classmates that, oh, yeah, I lied to them. I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to have me a pair of Jordans. I'm going to get them Jordans. So one thing, I lied. Said something falsely that I knew wasn't true. So in order to back up my lie, I had to come through with those Jordans. So I uh, then went to the PE coach and I lied to him and said I couldn't get in my locker. The locker that I was get, trying to get into was the locker of the student who had the Jordans. So I went and told another lie to the coach. And he, not knowing any better, gave me the key to the locker. I went to the locker. And I stole the young man's Jordans. Uh, I wore them for about a day. And then I got caught. Needless to say, that was a very, very, very <laughs> embarrassing moment in my life. Whereas I was, I was called out for being a thief um, in front of everybody. So all I can say is that it's, it's not worth it. And then, like we said earlier... Yahuwah, what he has for us is for us. Amen? There's no need for us to steal because Yahuwah is a provider. Exceedingly above anything that we can imagine. 
Remember, we read, we read that out of First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter two, verse nine. For I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the mind of man, what Yahuwah has prepared for those of us who love Him. So, in order, of course, to love Him, we have to love and seek after righteousness. That time in my life, I just wasn't seeking after righteousness. I was seeking after vanity. I was I was lustful of this this one product, these these shoes, a man that everybody overpopularized, and I just just wanted to have them. I wasn't content where I was, or what I was given, or what my mother was able to provide for me. I just had to be greedy and want more and lie and try. To get something that wasn't mine, coveting and stealing. So I had to go through that embarrassment. But I just want to say that when we are content where Yahuwah has us, and we, we understand truly what it means to be a base and what it means to be abound, then Yahuwah will increase us. Like Yahusha said, the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. And the only reason why is, one, the love of money, lack of commitment, and no one really wants to work. They want to get those shortcuts. They want to make that fast buck, that fast dollar. So some people will steal your ideas. Some people will steal the, your product. Some people will steal in order to get ahead. A man. Now, there are times where a person will steal out of necessity. A man, we learn that, or we can find scripture on that from Mashaya Proverbs chapter 6, verses 30 and 31. This is what, uh, this is what we, I can say that um, King Shalomah, Solomon, is, Solomon is saying. Men do not despise a thief if... He steals to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance in his house. So I'm not saying with this verse that Yahuwah allows stealing, but he's just making intercession that he only stole because he was hungry. But give him an opportunity to pay back that of what he stole and if he is found that if he is caught then yeah but upon the thief who is caught you've got to pay it back sevenfold but we know that there are there are thieves out there in our professional lives that pray to or pray on our our want just for a better life and they they steal maliciously and and they adjust the the weights and the balance to tip it in their favor a man and this is where uh mashalia proverbs chapter 11 1 through 3 come in effect this is what it reads a false balance is an abomination to yahuwah but a just weight is his delight when pride comes then comes shame but with the lowly is wisdom the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. And we see that happening throughout the financial world. We see that happening to companies that deal in this vanity, that deal in deceit. Many financial institutions have been sued for billions of dollars because of their false felonious practices. Many stores have had lawsuits come against them because of their false felonious and vanity uh, practices that deal in false weights and measurements. And we can even look at Facebook itself. The idea of Facebook was stolen from the twins, uh, the Vossler twins or whatever it is. So we see whereas um, the present owner has been sued had to pay out a large sum of money to those individuals because he stole their idea so the thing that i wanted to say even with my own transgression of trying to steal someone else's shoes is that anything as scripture has mentioned that is gained through vanity gained through deceit 
when you it's not going to last it is going to be diminished and we can see again from Mashaya Proverbs uh, chapter 20 verse 17 bread of deceit is sweet to a man but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel I mean metaphorically the shame I felt in front of everybody being called a thief is like having gravel in your mouth because it's not pleasant to eat it's not pleasant to stomach the eyes of everyone upon you saying, oh, that, that dude stole the other guy's shoes. What is wrong with him? So the scriptures speak and the scriptures are true. Of course, we are discerning and we are learning. We are being receptive to what the word of Yahuwah has to offer. We know that Yahuwah is indeed a provider and we have no reason to steal. A man, we have no reason to steal. Now, I want to address the second aspect of theft. And of course, this aspect is coming from the spiritual part of it. And what we want to ask ourselves is, will a man rob Yahuwah? And we all know the answer to that question because many of them are doing it right now. But let us go to our scriptures and see what the word has to say, what the word has to offer from Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And it, and it basically reads, Will a man rob Yahuwah? Yet you have robbed me, says Yahuwah. But you say, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Okay, so we know that in the church, they rob Yahuwah. They have changed his name, changed his word. And now they accept tithings and offerings in the form of money. And they take that money to enrich in themselves, big luxurious houses, expensive cars, lavish trips, a man. But what is Yahuwah doing? He is indeed exposing the, the vanity of the church. He is, he is showing us on multiple levels how some of these preachers are false, filled with vanity filled with corruption as they are intermingling sexually, uh, romantically with their congregation. He's showing us how some of these televangelists are indeed possessed with an unclean spirit, unclean ruach, a man. And in this instance, again, the scriptures are true that anything that we gain through vanity, through deceit, through Stealing, being a thief, it will not last. It will diminish. And basically, I can say that when you see these stories, when you hear of what's happening in the church, what's happening with these televangelists, Yahuwah is balancing the scales. And unto those who have been called out, who know the name of Yahuwah and Yahusha, they see dollar signs as well. So you got some who are doing their own translation to sell it to the world, to say that it is better than anything that's out there. There are those who are or who have robbed Yahuwah of his intellectual property. So we see that from the first part, or at least from the first aspect, that this, the word is true. From my own experiences, the word is true. The word of Yahuwah is true that what we gain through vanity, what we gain through deceit, what we gain through theft, what we gain from stealing, it will not last long. It will not. You will lose it. And let us think on this one thing, that in this physical world, there is an equalizer, right? What we gain through vanity and theft, what we gain from stealing, Yahuwah corrects that. And we are ashamed. But what greater penalty is, though, is, is, is established for those who steal, who rob Yahuwah, especially of his intellectual property? That's what I want to ask. That's the question that is on my breath right now. What greater penalty is there? I mean, let us look at Yom Yahu Jeremiah chapter 7 verses 9 through 11. Where you steal, murder, and commit adultery, 
and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom you know not and come and stand before me, Yahuwah, in this house, which is called by my name and say, we are delivered to do these things, these abominations in this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, says Yahuwah. He has seen that these individuals were going to take his word, take his intellectual property, steal what is his, change it and turn around and try to profit from it. A man calling themselves prophets, calling themselves teachers, calling themselves scholars, only to get before the crowd, get before the people and say that Yahuwah sent me and we know what the most high yahuwah has said about those who claim to bring a word claim to have been sent by yahuwah and yahuwah did not send them so the question is will a man rob yahuwah the, the answer is going to be yes but is it worth it for that individual who steals and robs from yahuwah no i don't think it's going to be worth it in the end a man let us look at uh, Yahukanan, John chapter 10, verse 10, and then I'm going in my seat. This is what uh, Yahukanan, John 10, 10 says. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yahusha says that I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now we look at this word, discern, dissect, break it down to its lowest common denominator, to, to receive what Yahusha is saying. Yahusha is indeed the word of Yahuwah made flesh. And he came. So he is saying that the word came so that we might have life abundantly. That if we abide in the word of Yahuwah, if we keep his commandments, we're going to have life abundantly. Because the word of Yahuwah is indeed a light. And it shines brightly. But when we ignore that light and go unto things and do things that are not of Yahuwah, then we fall into vanity. We fall into deceit. We fall into transgression. We fall into iniquity. And we fall out of favor with Yahuwah. And there goes our light. There goes our life. I just want to close with something credible. That Shaul Paul did say in Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that is in need. So, like, like myself, I have stolen, I have been a thief, I have lied, I have transgressed. But by the correction of Yahuwah, those things are no more a part of me, nor will they ever come near me again. Because I will obey and keep the Thura, the commandments of Yahuwah, Yahusha. We can all attest the times that we may have taken things that are not ours. Let us seek Yahuwah for correction, for redemption. Let us, let us adhere to his commandments. Let us steal no more and let us labor. Let us work with our hands. Let us do the things that are good and right by Yahuwah, and in time he shall open up the windows of the Shamayim of the heavens and pour upon us a blessing that we won't have room to receive. Mash I just want to thank everyone again. We are on the eighth commandment. You shall not steal. We know that Yahuwah is able to provide abundantly beyond our expectations so let us let us continue to seek his righteousness as the mashiach yahusha says in Mathata Yehu, matthew chapter 6 that seek the kingdom of yahuwah and all his righteousness and all the things all the desires of our hearts will be added unto us so that's the work that's the labor to seek his righteousness, to do the things that he loves and everything that we desire after, every good thing that is of Yahweh that he has already prepared for us will come unto us at the right time. So there's no need to steal. And just as Brother Shaul Paul said, 
Let him who stole steal no more. Seek Yahuwah for correction. Seek Yahuwah for forgiveness. And if no one has told you today, hasn't, will not tell you tomorrow, I love you. And until next time, may the peace of Yahuwah rest rule and abide in you. Shalom.